Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Azuka Onwoka. People call me Brand Azuka because that is what I have all over the social media, every platform. I am a communicator, a professional communicator. I'm a brand management uh, consultant, a strategist, a journalist, and a personal coach. Uh, I studied English at the University of Nigeria, and then I did my master's at University of Lagos, and then I did my MBA at University of uh, uh, Nigeria. The results is still awaited. I was doing my PhD in Nigeria before I came over to Nova Scotia. Um, in terms of what I have done in community, from my days in secondary school, I was the senior prefect of my secondary school. And when I went into the university too, I was um, the editor and uh, in charge of uh, the association of English uh, and literary students. And when I graduated, I have been in associations, in volunteer you know, organizations. I've worked for my community, the Newe. I'm the president of Organihu Newe community. I am now a member of the Halifax Heritage Advisory Committee. Uh, committee as a member of the board. I am a board member of Iruka uh, uh, Think Tank, which is a think tank for the uh, Alex Ekweme Federal University in Nigeria. So in all ramifications, I have worked in different capacities. I am an ideas person, a strategist. I am organized in planning things and creating templates. And I will tell you more when we go into details. If you have noticed my campaign material, it goes by the acronym ITA. If you remember, if you, are, if you came in as a permanent resident, the moment Canada gives you ITA, you know you don't land. That is invitation to apply. But in my own case here, it is integrity, transparency, and accountability. Because that is what I am. It's not what I talk. That is what I have been from childhood. And for you to be able to lead people well, they have to trust you. They have to believe whatever you, you, you are telling them. So if we talk about issues, the first thing that I would do, which everybody will know, that I will not, as the president of this association, I will not be a contractor a vendor, a supplier, or anything of such. I will not benefit from the association. And my wife will not do that. My family will not do that. And I will not allow a member of the executive to do that. If you want to do any business, please, you go out and do business. You should not be working and telling us that you are recusing yourself and then you are supplying things for the association. That is, no matter how you put it, it is not morally right. So that is the way... You know, the first thing uh, that I will bring to board, and then I will ensure, I saw what the Board of Trustees wrote the last time uh, at, at this week, you know, saying that the ethnic associations are not allowed. But the Constitution says that the satellite organizations, which are ethnic associations, are recognized. So if you want to get all the elements of society, you bring everybody to ensure that they are represented in the governance of the association in decision making. And I grew up in a community where you have the uh, Omona, you have the, the quarter, you have the village. All of them work together to ensure that the big body, they are not seen as divisive. They are seen as branches that get to the grassroots to get everything working smoothly. The, the first thing that I will do, you're talking about harmony, unity, and building that. Yes. Um, one sad thing that I have noticed I is that even though we left Nigeria, most of us have refused to drop that thing that did not work that made us to run away from Nigeria because most of us ran away actually from Nigeria. Because when somebody who is working in a bank as a bank manager or a senior manager leaves everything, leaves his house and, and everything and comes to Canada in his 40s or 50s, he is actually running away because something is wrong. S you know, so we need to build a new way of doing things here. The Canadian way is working. The Canadian way is diversity, inclusion, 
and uh, equity. Yes, they are doing merit, but they are also using you know, diversity to ensure that every uh, organ is represented. One way I would do that, the bylaw, as deficient as it is, has provision for special committees and standing committees. I will form a diversity, equity, and inclusion committee that will uh, ensure that everything that concerns the ethnic group, which is, it is stated in the bylaw, that is 2.1.25, that ANNS shall recognize every registered satellite organization at the annual Nigerian Independence Day celebration. So the ethnic groups are allowed I I I there, that is to register. Now, we have the satellite uh, in organizations. The best way, I can't teach people how to speak Yoruba. I can't teach them how to speak Ibibio. But if we support the uh, uh, you know, satellite organizations to operate, and they will be like branches. If we know what happened in the Bible with Moses, his father-in-law Jethro said, if you continue to govern over these people, you will burn out and you will die. Set up people who will be there attending to local issues so that you can look at the general issues. So the satellite organizations will look at those issues and then Thank they will harmonize much. and then we'll have a seamless organization. Thank you very much. A lot of people are saying they shouldn't be paying dues uh, to participate in the election, they shouldn't pay dues uh, when there is uh, camps, Nigeria Night, and all those programs. How do you intend to raise funds to still do all these things? Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, yes, if we start by getting grants for the uh, organization, and I told you the first time that when you are trusted, when people believe that their money is not funding you or funding you or funding things around you, they will be willing to bring out their funds. If you remember that the first Nigerian airport that was built by the indigenous was built by Sam Mbakwe, people raised money. When Nigerian, when there was a, a, a problem with the second Niger uh, bridge, I wrote that people can actually mobilize money and build it if the federal government was not uh, zero. So if people trust you, First of all, is that they, there are members of the association who will be willing to donate. That is one. But we will also continue with the, uh, the grant because Cana you know, Canada supports that very well to raise funds through the grant. But if we have the funds, there will be no need for Nigerians after getting all that money. I will not pay $30,000 to bring out a musician and pay first class to bring out, uh, to bring uh, Timmy Dakolo to come here and sing for us, when people pay money to come and watch it. The people who pay that money were not the people who actually belong to the association because they could not afford that. So if you have the grant from the, from the government, there will be other ways. I will be willing, for example, to bring out a thousand dollars to support ANS if I trust the leadership and we need, for example, to build a house, to buy something, we will be able to raise that fund. There are people here who <coughs> are willing to, but the lack of trust is the bone of contention. So uh, then for the students, we will also find ways. For example, that program, students could not attend it because they could not afford it. And the uh, people are here just to pay to vote. We will organize it differently. The most important thing I will do as the president of this uh, association is to create a template. That is what, you know, an organized template. What is working for Canada that made us to leave Nigeria to come here is that they have a system. If a leader like Donald Trump were to be in Nigeria, he wouldn't have lost, uh, you know, the last election. But the American system is bigger than Donald Trump, and he can win Again, the president today cannot not stop him because the system is bigger than him. So when we create a, a, a system that is organized, that is understood, and that will be starting from the bylaw, we need a new bylaw. And that bylaw is the one that will state everything we have seen, all the uh, phrases of the bylaw. We will review the bylaw to get you know, a standardized uh, document. The bylaw, for example, are you with me? The bylaw... The bylaw, the bylaw, for example, says that the uh, AGM will hold in January. We are in March. 
the bylaw says that the tenure of the executive will be for two years. The last executive was elected in February. We are in March. We don't know when they will take over. So, you know, we have loopholes. We have already broken the bylaw the way it, it is. And we don't even know, you know, if what, what you are doing. And the law says that anything we do that's not according to the bylaw is null and void. We're already breaking it. So, and we ensure that we have an organized bylaw that will protect, you know, the interests of our, of our people. Uh, you know, secondly, we started this, I was here 30 minutes before the time, and I was the only one with the cameraman. I will kill the Nigerian time and Nigerian spirit. We cannot leave Nigeria and come here and be doing Nigerian. It is insulting and embarrassing to us. We must be doing things in, in time. Um, the one is that I will create, Nigeria has the biggest professionals in the U.S., according to you know, Obama. And it is also here too. I will create a media group that will help to boost Thank the you. image of professionals here. Thank you very much. In, in about 15 seconds, I don't think you answered the question that was directed at you. You said you were going to okay. be a watchdog. Yes. 15 seconds, just give us a response to yes. that. Yes. Yes. I said that after this uh, election, I will be the watchdog to, this, to the uh, administration. But when the uh, electorate rejected the president and the treasurer, I, you know, because he was the only candidate, and they rejected him, rejected the treasurer, and the treasurer had the decency to say, I have been rejected, I won't run I I I again. So now that there is vacuum, I felt that there was a need, and people called me to come out. Uh, you know, first of all is that I am a professional communicator. I, you know, there was something Mr. Uh, Adegoke said. He said that nobody came to him for information. He was uh, you know, actually waiting for people to come so that he would explain to them, no, I won't wait for people to come to me. When you leave any vacuum in communication, people will fill it with gossip and rumors. And that is what happens, you know, in crisis management or in issues management. You don't leave any room for, I will be the, we have a PRO, but I will be the chief communicator. And that is that I will be, no, he will be doing his job, but I will be the chief communicator in the sense that while he's, sending messages and doing uh, you know all that i will be excuse me excuse me uh, you know uh, uh, no they're talking into what i'm, I'm saying uh, so uh, you know I, I will be the one reaching out to the media i told you about the capacity of nigerians are have the third biggest immigrants in canada here according to reports but we are never reported in the tv Two years ago, you know, there was a report by CBC that cars are being uh, stolen from here and taken to West Africa. Lagos was mentioned. I wrote to the CBC. I said, you are talking about, you know, cars being taken away. You didn't tell us how they are being taken away. They are not uh, 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 pins. They are large instruments. Two months ago or three months ago, CBC did another report about how cars are taken away from Canada because they were blaming us and not blaming how it was happening here. So I will take that uh, carrot. I will do a monthly report. I, I know that was what he was quoting. I was the one who said it uh, at the last meeting, that I will be presenting monthly accounting, monthly report. And I will also in, in ensure that there is a quarterly in-house, in-person meeting so that we can see one another. Thank you. Thank you very much.